God, the Holy Ghost, comes to teach us a realm to liberate us, to, to, to set us free, to think beyond the realms of Newtonian physics, to think beyond the realms of the confinement of physical laws and, and, and human behavior. He comes and gives to us the privilege of walking on the water, raising the dead, of understanding joy unspeakable, his character, his demeanor. And yet people are still locked into the prison. Think about it. They're still locked into the prison of human behavioral patterns that have been fortified in their life from childhood from their parents, then from their peers, then from their, you know, further established in their teachers, you're rewarded for bad behavior. I mean, gonna, what's the result going to be, okay? You know, there's a lot of psychological studies on this, okay? And, and of course, every person in here is one of those, but nonetheless. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God for grace. Praise God for mercy. Praise God for forgiveness. Praise God for the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. That brought us to all of that. Praise God for the Holy Ghost that has brought forth a new creation that is united unto God so that we can learn from God. Quit learning from men. Give me a break. Yeah. Don't get high on yourself and what you learned in school or whatever. <laughs> Father has come to bring us such a place of just, you know, an unimaginable gifting to where that we can walk in His life, abundant life, eternal life, unending life, an ageless life. Okay, Father wants us to know what He knows. Okay? To know what He knows in that He's eternal means it would take you an eternity by deductive reasoning to know what He knows. He gives this to us, you know. He fills us with the knowledge. Of course, there's still a function of time and relationship to know. You know, if somebody says to a person, I want to know everything about you right now. Well, that's pretty unreasonable. You know, you're either crazy or somebody needs to educate you. It's going to take some time, okay? It's a function of time. And, I mean, I love my wife, but, I mean, it's a function of time to get to know her. And praise God for that. And our relationship should be that way. But especially with Father. And Father wants to develop this. And uh, there's all kinds of influences, and there's all kinds of distractions, and there's all kinds of things that would try to run interference with that. The Father gives us wisdom and understanding to say, you don't belong here. You're out of here. I mean, this help you. If it's not the behavior of God, it's a lie. If I give you, can get that much wisdom, my goodness, you will begin to soar in the realms of the Spirit. If it's not the behavior of God, if it's not the reaction of God, it's a lie. I don't care how much evidence that you have and how many reasons you have to, and proofs and whatever to believe whatever it is that you believe or to react in any whatever way it is that you're going to react. The truth, God has a monopoly on it. He alone has it. He is truth. Everything he does is truth. Everything he says is truth. He is the truth. And outside of him, it's just simply the other thing. Are you with me? Yes. And so why be deceived anymore? You know, why walk around in a state of stupidity any longer? When we, God, has blessed us with the glorious liberty of the sons of God, he that the Son says free is free indeed, no longer to be confined to a demonic harassment in a human realm, to be incarcerated no longer. Hallelujah. 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 Ha, ha, ha. Hallelujah. Praise God. Don't incarcerate yourself by going back and thinking like you used to think and behaving like you used to behave, okay, just because you used to get mad and upset and feel good about it. I mean, you just don't allow that stuff anymore. Because that's going to create death and destruction in your life. It's not going to result in the consequence of what you want in your life. And I want, this is School of Spirit. I want to teach you tonight about how to flow in the anointing and to give yourself, yourself to flowing in the anointing because it's there when you're flowing in the anointing that the provision of all that He has given, yes. all the blessings, all the spiritual blessings that He's blessed us with in the heavenly realm can go unrealized by you if you misbehave. If you're unwilling to do what God says, I want to say it again. You've heard me say it many times. I'll say it again. Your proper response to God's love for you is obedience. Amen. Period. Yep. Okay. And somebody says, well, I got to understand it before I do it. Well, God did not give that to Adam. He said, just don't eat of it. He didn't sit down and tell him how darkness is going to sweep the world, how the lion was now going to attack the lamb, how that his son was going to rise up and kill his other son and break it all down for him. He didn't tell the rich man, listen, just do this. I'm going to tell you, be pressed down, shaking together, running over, he, I'll multiply to you. I mean, he didn't tell him. He said, do this. He didn't tell him about the reward and he didn't tell him about the consequence. I heard today, I heard 
uh, today, I heard some theologians got together and they described the whole Old and the New Testament in one sentence, and it was very good. I, I, I liked it. God reigns, He saves, He provides through covenant in Christ. Beautiful. I agree with that. That's great. But I still got them beat. I can describe the entire Old and New Testament inside of two words, and one word, if you, by context, two, very specifically, trust God. Trust God. It's where Adam failed, Abraham succeeded, and, and Jesus personified it. And now it's a call. And, and reality of it is where you don't, it's where you fear, and that's a demonic realm. And now it controls and influences your behavior, your actions, your deeds, the result and the consequences of that is a death and a destruction. It causes sickness and disease in your body. It causes ignorance in your head. It ca causes you to live in some kind of incarceration within a human realm of behavior. A, the, sniff the sniff mechanism takes over your whole disposition. A dog. Everything is discerned by the sniff. It's a terrible realm to live in. Are you listening to me? It is, I can show you behavioral patterns that are simply a model, fully modeled by this. And I'm not going to go into that. And I just want you to understand, God has liberated us. Praise God. Hallelujah. I don't have to discern my sniff anymore. Woohoo! Hallelujah. I get to walk in wisdom and insight and revelation. I get to be taught by the Holy Ghost how to behave just like God. I get to understand those deeds, those actions that result in his life. Life. <laughs> Instead of behaving myself in a way that the result is going to be death and destruction. You sow to the flesh, what's going to happen? You're going to reap a whirlwind of destruction. Praise God, we've been delivered from that. Yeah. Hallelujah. Having been given the divine nature, been delivered from the corruption that comes through all that misbehavior, all of that wrong living, all of the incarcerations of the, uh, that, that we have lived in, that place of incarceration in the bondage of pure humanism, liter literally being taught every day by demon spirits. God liberates us to come now be taught of God, to function and flow in his life. That's the flow of the anointing. And yet we have to wrestle with people and be mistreated because we're trying to get them blessed. And it's really about behavior. It really is about behavior. It's really about whether or not you're going to obey God. Because I'm going to tell you right now, you're not going to understand why you got to obey until after you obey. You obey and then you're going to understand. Oh, well, I'm glad I obeyed. Revelation comes to you. But it's the only proper response to his love. Are you listening to me? It's the only proper response. He's not going to explain to you. It's not, he's not going to explain to you why you have to obey. He's going to say obey. And even we are sitting on the side of now with lots of explanations. We got a lot of insight. We got the insight that Adam didn't have. We got insight that Abraham did not have. So far as we know, they had not even a clue to the things, the vast wisdom and insight that we now have by being able to read the Bible and look back on their lives and understand what the results are for right decisions and what the results are for bad decisions, what the results are for obedience and what the results are for disobedience. We should have so much wisdom that we got it. We got it. We got it. And so tonight I pray that you're going to get it a little bit more. Amen. Yes. And I, I'm going to tell you right now, the measure of knowing God is behaving like him. Yes. The measure of knowing God is walking in his love. The more you know him, the more you walk in his love. The more you know him, the more you walk in his mercy. You find, show me someone walks in love and mercy and forgiveness, and I'll show you somebody who knows God. Mm. Huh? And I, I pray to night that every one of you want to know him. Yes. And I praise God that he downloads the, that realms of eternity into our life so it won't take us eternal an eternity to know him. Uh, that's the greatness of God. And the more we walk with him, the more he fills us with his wisdom, the more he fills us with his understanding, the more he fills us with his spirit of wisdom and revelation. And so that we can now live this out. Hallelujah. But yes, yes, still, it is still a function of time. Relationship and knowing one another is a function of time. So we get to grow in grace. Hallelujah. But he puts it at a high pace. Praise God. You and I know right now things that all of the great and mighty men of wisdom and insight with the great anointings that they had, Elijah and the like, did not understand or know. We already have that. And we're sitting here yawning, wondering why God hadn't told us anything. Are you listening to me? Yeah. <laughs> we're sitting here upset about why, not, why we don't know. Why don't we don't have more? Wait a minute. What are you talking about? Father has poured out upon us abundance. Hallelujah. 
that we haven't really even begun to explore and tap in because we've not recognized the value of, of being slave to all. We've not recognized the value. That's what he does. That's, if you're going after the fullness of the kingdom, slave of all, servant of all. That's greatest in the kingdom. I'm going after the greatest kingdom. I'm going to learn that. But it, it, within the framework of human understanding and the incarceration of human knowledge, ultimately that has no meaning nor value. But if suddenly if we give it meaning and we give it value, we start giving ourselves to this, we begin to explore the unlimited vastness of all the heavenly resources of the things of God that are made, made available. But the human model and the demonic realm that is a surrounding us, that we're, is, 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 is everywhere, and the prince of the power of the air, is actually imposing upon us something different, and we've got to learn how to walk in truth and quit being impacted by the lie. Amen. Hallelujah. Because there we're, there we're feasting on his love. We're feasting on his life. That life and that flow of his life to us, hallelujah, and through us is what then ultimately results in our health and our welfare and our well-being, our spirit, the spiritual riches in our life, the physical riches in our life, and the material riches in our life. And, and so to really drive this home with you, I want to look at a verse of scripture that I think is in Numbers chapter 20. So let's go over there and let's see how close I am. Pretty sure it's Numbers chapter 20. Um, and um, I'm, I'm going for the death of Aaron and verse 23. Um, let's see, somewhere right around in here. Uh, yes, so, it, it, so let, let me just, uh, verse 24 says, well, in verse 23, this isn't the exact scripture that I wanted, but we'll find it here in a minute. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron and Mount Hor by the coast of the land of Edom, saying, Aaron shall be gathered unto his people. I can give you, a, I'm, not, I'm just going to give you a little, you know, a little extra here tonight. Uh, this is how we know that we're not going to be strangers when we get to heaven and you're not going to be wandering around looking for your folks. Okay, we know that we are gathered unto our fathers and unto our people and unto our kindred and unto our nation. All that died before you that belonged to you is a family reunion. That's who you're going to ultimately. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing where God's got a design. But a lot of our scripture on that is started good to you soon as we're passing by it. For ye shall not enter the land which I have given unto the children of Israel because ye rebelled against me at my word, the water of Meribah. And then verse 26, I want you to look at this. And... Now take Aaron and Eleazar, verse 25, and his son, and bring them up unto Mount Hor, and strip Aaron of his garments, and put them upon Eleazar his son, and Aaron shall be gathered unto his people, and shall die there. And Moses did as the Lord commanded, and they went up into Mount Hor, and the night, uh, uh, in the sight of all the congregation, and verse 29 is what I want to give to you, 29, 28, 29. And Moses stripped Aaron of his garments, he put them on Eleazar the son, and Aaron died there in the top of the mount of Moses, in the top, in the top of the mount. And Moses and Eleazar came down from the mountain when all the congregation saw that Aaron was dead. They mourned. Okay, here's what I want to get to you. I'm going to, I'm going to just start with this verse of Scripture there in verse 28, and I'm going to build on this. As long as Aaron was walking in the anointing, which those garments represented, he, was, he couldn't die. He, he was protected against uncleanness. Uh, there was an obedience there that had to be uh, cared for, that he, had to, that he had to be mindful of. There was no sickness. You know, read about Aaron getting a cold. Okay? There was no lack of provision. Those garments represented the anointing that God had given him as a priest to stand before his presence. I'm telling you right now, when you're anointed by God to stand before his presence, you're standing in the presence of God. Anything, you're not having anything going on in your life that Father's not having going on in his life. If Father's got it going on in his life, you've got it going on in your life. If Father doesn't have it going on in his life, he's not had, been, had one morning of sickness. Or, or, or one evening of a virus. He's not had a plague. He's not had a, he, listen, just think about it. Are you with me? Yeah. And I want to talk to you about the anointing that God has given to you and you being clothed with it. With you literally putting on the Lord Jesus Christ and understanding it's the flow of God's divine power in life that makes the difference yeah. of whether Satan can deceive you and trip you up. Right. So it's not like people are always focused on I can't do. No, you need to be focused on I can do. God is really more about the can do's. Here Here's what I got for you rather than the can't do. I mean, when he told Adam, he said, everything before you, it's yours. You can do it. There was only one thing he couldn't do. I mean, come on. And we flipped the thing upside down. 
Why? Because reality of it is, is there's more depending upon the arm of flesh and human ability to mitigate the problems than allowing God the Holy Ghost that has anointed us with the same anointing that God anointed Christ Jesus with to be that which dominates and rules our lives, which we literally function in on an everyday basis in a natural kind of way. And I want to talk to you about that. I want to talk to you about the fact that the anointing grows, the spiritual manifestation of the power of God grows and develops in your life as you give yourself to these things. You know, I, I, I've seen men of God uh, who had great anointings. I, I, I went with a, a prophet of God one time to visit a very famous man. And this prophet of God, as we were on our way, he said, yeah, I was in his meetings when uh, in another country. And he said there was thousands, uh, tens of thousands of people there. He stood on the platform and he waved his hand. All he did was wave his hand. And all the place was mowed down. It was mowed down. People went, fell out under the power of God. Just waving his hand. Talking about all the exploits. We got there and the man was dying. He was dying. The anointing was no longer manifested in his life. We left and the prophet of God said to me, there was no more... He says, it's just a shock for me. I hadn't seen him since the 80s. And I just wanted to come pay my last respects. He's a great man of, of God. He said, the anointing is as though it were departed, as though his garments had been stripped off of him and he was there to die. Listen, I've watched it. I've seen people that get in sickness or they get in disease or get disgruntledness or they get overwhelmed with discouragement. And I know, I recognize, you, you stop flowing in the anointing. You need to get back to preaching. You need to get back to ministering. You need to back, get back to sharing your testimony with everybody you can. You need to get back to have an opportunity that you have to pray for people, to pray for them, to lay hands on any sick person that ever comes your way. The problem is you over there trapped in a realm of oppression. People, demonic oppression is a real state. It's a real mental state. It's a thinking state. Demonic oppression will impact your decision-making process, your behavior, your demeanor, your disposition. It is a demonic state that you're going to learn that, wait a minute, I'm not living under that cloud of darkness. I'm called to live over here under this cloud of divine power and glory. And I need to understand how to, be, how to put on the Lord Jesus Christ because in doing so, I will make no uh, provision for the flesh. And you can understand that in so many different ways from human ability to, to, to the natural human desires to those things that the demonic would impose upon you to fulfill its lust or to fulfill its desire. No, 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 no. I'm here to fulfill Father's desire. I'm here to live in a heavenly realm. I've been downloaded with an eternal knowledge, praise God. I've been downloaded by the eternal spirit, praise God. The eternal God lives on the inside of me and he's given me the privilege to walk in the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. So look, I mean, there's practical applications here. Hallelujah. And it's, yes, the development and the growth of it is on, and, and on the basis of personal relationship, as I've already talked about, and the time factor in, in, in growing a relationship. It's there found in, in, a, in a place of, of a prayer life, a consistent prayer life. If you don't have one, you better get yourself one. You better find one quick. You're never going to really develop properly unless you have it. And it needs to be a real one. Hallelujah. It needs to develop to where it can be seen in a, on a public stage and change the atmosphere while you're doing it. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I've discovered, I've watched people who just, who haven't, especially if you haven't been born in religion. Religion is a stronghold you got to run through, break through. You understand that if you don't understand it, you'll never break through it. If you're playing patty cake with a religion thing, I'm going to tell you right now, it's got you defeated before you ever get started. Because I've watched too many people inside of a year of walking with God, powerful prayer life, atmosphere changing prayer life. Okay, it, they, look, I don't believe that God leaves some people out. If I did, I could leave everybody alone that isn't functioning this. I believe this. A reality of it is, is it comes down to a place of whether or not you're willing to participate with God or you want to do it your own way. So many people want to talk God in to doing it their way. I am so happy he's not listening to anyone. Amen. 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 I'm glad he's got the thing settled forever. And he says, look, you can come and be a part of it and participate. Here's what I have for you. So the reality of it is, is Father has given us a river, but it's, look, if you understand what Paul's saying, he's describing the river as a function of being continually filled, okay? Because, you know, if, if, if the river was not a function of being continually filled, Paul, the, 
the, the, the Galatians chapter 5, verse 18, is entirely meaningless. Uh, don't be drunk. Because he's talking to God's people. He's talking to Holy Ghost people. He's talking to people on the highest level, if you would, of, 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 of consecration to the Lord and, 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 and functioning in the things of the Spirit. That's the church at Ephesus. And he says, redeem the times for the day is evil. Don't be, wise, but un, don't be unwise, but be wise. Redeem the time for the day is evil. Don't be drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. To be filled, to be continually filled, speaking yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. As we drink, a river flows. Okay, as we drink, a river flows. And once again, it is a relationship. It is yielding to God. It's depending upon Him. It's saying, Lord, I, it's an act of submission. Lord, let your love flow out of me. It's acts of submission. Lord, I recognize if your love's not flowing out of me, out of me I'm dying. Are you listening to me? If your love, if your life's not operating in me, something else is taking, something else will move into the void. Are you listening to me? And I'm talking about you being able to walk in health. I'm talking about you able to walk in spiritual maturity. You know, the other night, and I've seen this over and again, you know, I prayed for a per person. I, I've seen this, believe, believe me, I, maybe the Lord will release me to give you a, a number of different stories. But I was praying for a person, wonderful person, consecrated to God, out on the outer envelope, okay, of, of advanced missions, okay, out where nobody else would go to an unreached people group, out in the back, back, back woods of Africa, okay, where there's no one else around, they're it, they're it, there's nobody else around, they're it, and, it, the, and the only thing that they're going to have in addition for fellowship are those that they win to the kingdom, now we can develop some fellowship, <laughs> you know, and, and some, uh, some people that got around us. And she's, she's contracted malaria, and she, she basically just about died. She was on her deathbed. God raised her up. They took out her gallbladder. She's sitting there. Her stomach is just, you know, she's got immense pain. She can't get up. She's loving every minute, every minute, every minute of the flow of the anointing. She's not just sitting there all overwhelmed with her problems. She's loving, she's in intense pain, loving every minute to display the power of God. You know, just so thankful for it. And, and so I went to her and I, I and, you know, and I, I noticed how much pain she was in and I, and I walked over to her and I, I, began, I said, what's, what's going on? She told me what was going on. I prayed for her and I said, how do you feel? She said, I'm still, I'm, I'm still just as much in pain. I prayed for her again. She said, no, I'm still just in, in much pain. So I said, get up. Come, I said, just get up. Now that was an act of faith to begin with because she's so in so much pain, okay? When you're in that much pain, your stomach pain, you don't want to move. She was no exception. She got up, and as soon as she got up in obedience, she already started feeling better. Now, because when your stomach is hurt, and your muscles in your stomach hurt, to take a step is extremely painful. And you women, you know that, especially, you know, women know that because of, of all they go through having a child. And um, she's walking, and what I did is I just, I said, if we can go pray for these people, you're going to lay your hands on them. Okay? And especially the sick, you lay hands on the sick. Okay, and you now people are getting touched by the power of God. She's laying hands on people. And as she's laying hands on people, guess what's happening to her? There is a flow. Yes. The anointing is flowing. See, the anointing is there, but it hasn't been, it hasn't been, uh, no demand's been placed upon it. And it's not been activated. It has to be activated. There has to be a demand. You can become, you can be full of the Holy Ghost, you know, and have joy and speak but full and glory. And if you don't activate it, you look like just as much of a sour puss as anybody else. I mean, you just look like, you know, it's like the guy said, hey, I know Grandpa's mule saved. <laughs> why? Well, why do you know Grandpa's mule saved? Because he looks just like all the rest of the people in the church. You know? So, you know, and a mule's got a real sad look. Because his lips really droop, you know, like a bulldog, you know, kind of thing. It looks just like the rest of the people in the church. You can be full of the ghost with the joy, but you never activate the joy. You didn't yield yourself to it. You have to yield yourself to it. You can walk around and you can say, you can justify an oppressed demonic state if you're not careful and be, you know, just justify, well, I'm unhappy because of this. I'm depressed because my grandmother, my great grandmother, my great great grandmother, they were all depressed too. And all these human excuses. Wait a minute, I thought you were born again. I thought you had a new father. Hallelujah. The wellspring springing. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, I found this. I, I, I talked to so many people. I, I said, have you been, I, I used to just leave it like this. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And everybody nods their head. 
And so finally now, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? They nod their head and I said, well, then let me hear it. <laughs> now they're looking at you cross-eyed and say, what are you talking about? I'm saying I'm talking about the same thing that Paul talked about. I'm talking about the same thing Jesus talked about. Hallelujah. <laughs> talking about the same thing Peter was talking about. Hallelujah. Huh? <laughs> Oh, well, no, no, that hasn't ever happened. Well, why don't we let that happen? Then you'll see them all clamming up, clamming up. Why? Because they're in a prison. They're in a prison. They're incarcerated within the framework of doctrines of men. Ideas of men is an incarceration too. You've got a lot of ideas. They aren't formed by God. The only ideas that are formed by God, you read in the Word. And the Spirit of the, life, the, Spirit of the, love, uh, the, uh, the Spirit of the Lord breathes life on them and makes them applicable to your life. So you understand, oh, wow, this joins people. This is good. <laughs> this, I, I like to have this all the time. Can I have this all the time? Paul says, yeah, I want you to have it all the time. It's my command. <laughs> and you find out the love. Wow, this love is amazing. This love is like a shield. It's like a, it's like a barrier that keeps all of the stuff that men would try to impose upon me. I hear people talking about, oh, you need to get around people and surround people with, that, that are really positive. Surround yourself with positive and successful people so that you can be positive and successful because then it's going to be a shield about you. You've got to be kidding me. What, what, what? What, you know, you know, what Bible are you reading? Listen, my shield is the Holy Ghost. My shield is the love of God. My shield is the presence of the Lord. I mean, I give myself to the love of God. It is a shield. People can have their bad attitudes. They can have their complaints. They can have all their issues. They can feel like they, they're, they're misused and abused and taken advantage of. When you walk in the meaning of God, you recognize all that stuff is a lie. And you don't yield your members to it. I'm taking advantage of it. I'm a slave of all. How can you take advantage of a slave? I'm here to lay down my life for you. How can you take advantage of somebody's here to die for you? See, it's not having the ideas and the concepts of God established in your spirit. Enough to where that they become the, the way that you think, the way that you process your thoughts. In other words, in your way you, you analyze the situation and circumstances around you is purely human, if not demonic, and you process it in a way that is entirely self-serving, huh? That is entirely humanistic, and the result of it is going to be demonic. And you're going to be acting just like all the rest of the devils in hell. <laughs> Hating, strife, division, feeling all upset, disgruntled, persecuted, cast down, dis you know, discouraged, rejected, lies. Lies. All lies. Because you ain't shielded. You ain't shielded. You can say you know God all you want. You don't walk in his love. You're a liar. You can say you know God all you want. You don't, you don't abide in him. You're a liar. You can say you know God all you want. You walk in darkness. You're a liar. All I did was just quote scripture. You know that. I just quote the first epistle. I didn't even get to, I didn't even get to chapter 3 of the first epistle of John. I just, that was just two, two verse 2 chapters. I didn't even get past verse 6. That was for, I just stopped at verse 5 just to give you a break. Not to overwhelm you with too much information. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, it's just you break it down with it's just truth or lie. It gets real easy to discern. It's God or Satan. It's really easy to discern. I mean, you don't have, you're not in a complicated matrix, you know, trying to figure all this stuff out, piece this thing together. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Amen. I know you are. Otherwise, God wouldn't be talking to you through me. But, you know, it, it's really what I was back. We incarcerate ourselves. Because we give ourselves to all this human idea. We'd rather go and, you know, you know, and, and show people, uh, you know, human sympathy and empathy rather than giving them the word of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Because you, you get emotionally involved in them. You're, you're out. You can't hear God now. You get all emotionally involved. Because uh, it's emotionally involved with fear. Fear of rejection. Fear uh, uh, of... Um, you know, fear, fear, fear of failure, uh, emotionally involved with your finances, fear that somehow you're going to be thrown out into the street. All those things compromise flowing in faith, flowing in the love, flowing in the goodness, flowing in divine provision. I want to tell you people, there is a place where God's glory will flow out of you like rivers. And, and I'm telling you right now, when it's flowing out of you like rivers, it's impacting every dimension of your human being. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Of your spirit being. Yes. Your will, your thoughts, your, your, your spirit, your soul, your every dimension of your life and your actions, your processes, consciousness, your conscience, every dimension of what makes us a being. 
is flooded, saturated, overwhelmed in this realm of the life of God. Yeah. Now every cell is being affected. Good. Huh? And it, and it really begins. It really, it, a lot of it really begins really with how you're willing to stand up and minister. I've, I've run into ministers. We're like, they're sick. They, they've been, I, I look, pastor, they say to me, Pastor, I've had this sickness. I can't get rid of it. I said, so how much have you been preaching? Well, I haven't been preaching as much since I've had the sickness. Well, that's your problem. Get flowing in the anointing, the thing of God. Ooh. Somebody said, well, I, what if I don't preach? What if I'm just a lay person? Ha ha. Get flowing in the anointing and go. Start telling people about what God did for you. Just go, you know, show up and go, wow, this is a wonderful day that the Lord has made. My goodness, he's so transformed my life. I see everything different. You got a whole lot out right there. They didn't get a chance to say nothing. I guarantee you just sowed so many seeds to asking them about the weather and where they from, and whether or not they go to church and who cares. I mean, lay it out, out of the heart, out of the wellspring of life. Let it be the anointing, because I'm talking about the anointing. I'm talking about something that flows out of you because you're excited about what God's done for you. That by virtue of result is the anointing. Just simply, it's a relationship result that says, wow, this is so good what God has done. My, he wants to do it for you too. <laughs> they didn't even get a chance. And they seated. They seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Seating people changes them. Yeah. Yeah. It's a big part of why I went to Cuba and I got there and everybody's, I mean, it's a big part of it. You know, because I know that before I left, before I got there, they were on the phone and the guy that I went with, who's a missionary from Mexico, said, I'm going to tell you right now. So this someone's got, he said, you're going to have to spend a lot of time encouraging these people. Didn't he say that? He said something like, you're gonna, you guys are going to have to really step up and break these guys through. I said, I don't have to do nothing. That's what I said. Basically, I don't have to do nothing. I don't let God do it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. They, they might think I'm there, that I'm there for them to evaluate me. They're there for God to evaluate them. I'm not on the job. I'm not on the block over here. I'm in the God factor, man. I, I'm over here about the master's business. I'm not sitting around in a fear, prison called fear. I'm here, to, I'm here to proclaim liberty to the captives, okay? We're going to find out whether or not we got an army to work with or whether we got to do it all on our own, you know? Hallelujah. Because there's just a lot of people God sends home. He just sends them home. They're afraid. Send them home. They need to marry. They, got, they, they want to get married. Send them home. They got a new house. Send them home. Oh, we still got too many. Now let's see how they drink. <laughs> I'm talking to you tonight about drinking. How do you drink? Hallelujah. How do you drink? God's going to use the people in the end that don't know how to drink properly. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Ah, Sataranaya. Harebekataya. Come and drink of this water. Hallelujah. See, total Mumbai. And it'll be a river springing up on the inside of you. And you won't thirst ever again. And it's a continual supply. You're not thirsty for the world, but you're more thirsty for it than ever for the things of heaven. The more you eat, the hungrier you get. Yeah. I've been gone five weeks. My stomach shrank. I got to the place where I was living on very little food. I mean, uh, Sharon said to me in Africa, she said, I, this is miraculous how little of food you live on. You know? And I, I, it's just, it's by choice because I don't like anything I see in, you know. It's not, my hand's cooking, you know, so it will give me the fruit and give me the nuts, you know. And then you, 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 get, you, get, you get home and, and somebody gives you just a normal type of a serving and you're like, well, it's way too much food. Huh? But you can just, for a while, you keep practicing, you won't get hungry. <laughs> keep, <right? laughs> keep practicing and you're, you're going to be enlarged. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right now, it's just, it's just you know, it's, it's, as they say, it's just, it is. It's shrunk up a little bit there. Hey, listen, come on, get yourself a divine appetite. Get start flowing in the things of God. Get excited about God. Don't be ashamed. Don't be in hiding. Yeah. Yeah. Look at yourself as, don't, you know, go and don't read the Bible and see those people hiding behind the rocks and in the caves and ask yourself, do I really want to be one of those? Do I really want to be one of those kind of people? Or do I want to be one of these people that are just so excited? Just, I'm yeah. not going to tell you about a free spirit. Let me tell you about a free spirit. Somebody who's been born of the spirit and full of the Holy Ghost. That's the only free spirit everybody else is bound. Okay? And people want to say a free spirit because they don't care about what anybody else thinks about it. They're just doing it. They're just doing it. They're just doing whatever it is they're excited about. They're doing it. Huh? 
It's just like, wow, man, how can you be so overt? Like, I'm just doing it. I, I feel good. I'm all caught up in God. Yeah. There is this flow. Hallelujah. <laughs> in the flow, in the flow of the river, that continual supply of heaven, allowing to be rich. Listen, Paul found, listen to me, Paul found that it was such a rich place to leave, he said, live in. He says, listen, I do this more than all of you. I, I flow in this realm more than all of you. Jude, Jude just chimes in there and says, yeah, man, pray in the Holy Ghost. Build yourself up, most holy ghost. Pray, most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Huh? Keeping yourself in the love of God. And there's a, you start breaking that down. You walk in the love of God. You walk in the fullness of God. You can't be walking around in the fullness of God and be sick, diseased, unhappy, dissatisfied, discouraged, rejected, disappointed, poor, naked, miserable, wretched. You can't be that stuff. You can't be that stuff. You just walking around, everybody's treating you bad, and you think it's all good. Woo, it's all good. How you know it's good? My goodness, you are really out of touch, aren't you? No, I'm in touch. I'm in touch with the realms of heaven. I'm out of touch with human behavior. It has no impact upon me. I live in another realm. It's called a heavenly realm. I'm seated together with him far above all principality, power, and might. I'm not living down here on the surface. I'm not living down here in the realms of my feelings, wearing my feelings on my sleeve, daring somebody to knock the chip off. You know what I'm saying? Just daring somebody to look at me wrong so I can be upset again. Huh? So I can be, have an excuse to have another problem with another person. What a terrible existence. That will result in death and corruption and sickness and disease and disappointment. You know, if you just took a lot of the Bible and you just put a natural application and you said, give me the person who's got a good attitude and happy. That person's going to be successful. I'll hire that person because they're not going to be problematic in the groom. They're going to be willing to be a team. Somebody's disgruntled, down in the mouth, looks, looks unhappy. They're going to do nothing but make trouble and cause problems in the business. No, we're not hiring them. Just in a natural perspective. How much more in a divine perspective? How much more in a spiritual perspective? I don't want any frowning people around me, disgruntled people always down in the mouth talking bad about somebody. Talking bad about something. Forget about it. Get away. God don't want you around. I don't either. He invites you to come, but he's not coming down to get you. He's calling you up to meet you. Yeah. Hallelujah. He's calling you up. You better come on up. Yeah. Praise God, he goes to seek and save that which is lost. But if you decide you're going to walk around all frowning and say, I'm going to tell you right now, God, the Holy Ghost looks for the happiest person in the place and says, I'm hanging out with them. I promise you that's what he does because he does not compromise his behavior. He's not hanging out with the frowning people. Yeah. I feel you, man. I feel you. He ain't feeling it. He ain't feeling it. No, 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 no. He's made a way of escape. He's invited us in. He's called us up. People want him to come down. He already did that. It's done. Now he's calling us up. Praise God. He's calling us up. He says, come on up. Come up here. Come on in. What an invitation. Let me clothe you. Now you put on the clothing. You put on the Lord Jesus Christ. You put on the new man. You put on this wonderful realm of divine power and glory. Hallelujah. This is all the difference. Yeah. And you're going to be looking for somebody. Look, it's just, you're going to, it's just, it's just a, <laughs> I love, i tell you right now. Listen to me. Airplane evangelism. <laughs> elevator evangelism you know you get in the elevator people talking about praise God oh, <laughs> amazing things God's doing forgive me man I just got to bubble up on the inside <laughs> Woo! hallelujah it got good see now you're not waiting for somebody to give their you're not seeking their approval you don't need friends you're not living an insecure life. You are in charge. You've been, you've been liberated. You're not incarcerated in a realm of human behavior. Yeah. Yeah. And human concepts and ideas. 
Woo! You ah, your eyes are open. You see, there's more with us than are with them. There is a flow going on. You get to be who God made you to be instead of trying to fit in with something that is anti-Christ, anti-God, and then carousing with the devils because you're so insecure. Help us, Jesus. Help us, Lord Jesus. Help us, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, start living this, people. Let the flow come. Put on, your, put on your holy garments. Put them on. If you don't know you got them on, put them on. <laughs> Paul's calling us to all, all prayer and supplication in the Holy Ghost. Watching thereunto with thanksgiving. People, you just start doing that. Your whole demeanor changes. Your life changes. When you tire, I mean, when, it doesn't matter how tired you are. You feel, you feel with divine energy. You feel with divine ability. Savitri <laughs> said that when I sweated, you know, preaching, I took a bath for Jesus, right? I mean, I was taking, you're talking about Cuba and Africa. I was taking a bath for Jesus, big time. Cuba, I mean, like, goodness gracious, eh? Yeah. <laughs> And, 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 but just so refreshed. Why? The anointing is the life flow of God. Yeah. Ooh, hallelujah. Yeah. Ooh, rabbi yeah. shake, hey, yeah. I, mean, I might not look good on the outside, but on the inside I yeah. feel great. Hallelujah. And I'm on Listen, you know, the girl with the stomach ache, the, uh, the stomach problems, far more than stomach, stomach ache, stomach problems, healed. Healed as she let the anointing flow through her. Healed. Hallelujah. Over and again, if I find, if I, if I find you know, I, I told Ann one time, I, she, she was having some physical problems. I said, baby, you're not, you're not preaching enough. You've got to preach more. The more you, because especially preaching, you know, and you can do it also with prayer. You can go into a, such a realm of pray, in prayer that the flood of heaven, I mean, it's just like preaching. It is, it is. Because, I mean, it's just like preaching all the way to the point of miracles, signs, and wonders. At the altar call, the, the anointing is so quick, your hands are on fire. Yeah. My, I, you, I stand around many times, my hands on fire. I mean, I feel like, I feel like that there is a glow that goes out about three foot. I just, yeah. It's amazing. It's just an yeah. amazing thing. A mantle of heaven upon me. I find the same thing in prayer. Amen. There's a realm of prayer. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. There's, it, it, let's make it. Come on, people. Yeah. There's a place called fellowship. Yeah. Come on, it makes a big difference on the physical state of your body. Listen, if, you are mur if you're murmuring, complaining, talking bad about people, you're cursing yourself. You're creating sickness and disease. You're creating poverty. You're creating a, a, a dejection, a going backwards, a, a, an opening of your spirit to commune with demon spirits. Listen to me. Are you, are you just taking notes? Amen. Because I just want to make sure everybody understands. It would be the highest level of disrespect for anybody to come in here and text on their iPhone or on anything that they have, okay, while the word of the Lord is going forth. You could not dishonor God in a higher level. Don't ever do that. Amen. Just want to make sure. You, I see some of you got your iPhones out. Fine, you're, as long as you're taking notes. As long as you're taking notes. Okay, because listen, you understand that that is a spiritual state and behavior. It's going to come on your kids, and it's going to come on everything around you. And you can say, well, I've got to do this. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. You give God the honor he's due. Yeah. Yeah. You give the word of the Lord the honor. Yeah. You show up. You, you, you already come into a place of his presence. Yeah. And understand, this isn't something that's supposed to be running. You're not multitasking with God. Yeah. It's about turning your whole life over to him and yielding. And because people, I'm talking to you about you yielding your members unto God and understanding the difference between truth and lie, between light and darkness, between what it is to know and have fellowship with God and not. I'm helping you just, I'm helping you define that. I want you to understand that in the school of the spirit that this is what it's really all about. It's really about understanding that it's not so much about the don'ts, it's about the do's, it's about the flow. Having the heavenly flow, having that realm of his life and power and glory functioning in you and understanding then in a very practical way how you hook up with that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed is the name of the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. When we think in reality that Father's purpose, that his anointing and his life should be on the scale to where that if you tried to quantitate it, it would be like rivers flowing out of us. If you tried to qualify it, 
it would be as though we were surrounded by a cloud of divine power and glory, just like that was settled upon Israel in the wilderness. And it came upon the tabernacle in the wilderness. Can't you think about it? And to begin to see that, to begin to visualize it, to visualize it, to give you, to th begin to thank the Lord for it. In other words, give yourself to it. Don't say, oh God, I wish that I had a river flowing out of me too. Because that's just a doubt and unbelief prayer. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Either you saved and baptized in the Holy Ghost or you're not. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? And if you saved and baptized in the Holy Ghost, about the time you start thinking, God, I've got a river flowing out of me, you start Amen. visualizing it. Because yeah. I'm telling you right now, there's too much death, there's too much sickness, there's too much slow growth in God, and it shouldn't be. There's too many people walking around with behaviors and attitudes and dispositions that are far from the life manifestation. Yeah. It really has an indication of, you know, human incarceration. Yeah. Yeah. Walking in the mind of men. Walking in the mind of devils. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How hungry are you? How hungry are you? How hungry are you? How, how, how insatiable is your appetite? How thirsty are you? Mm -hmm. And I think that when you begin to discover that you're not walking in the expression of this abundant life and these blessings and this flow of heaven that causes you to give yourself to, to ministering to people, it's a demand you place on yourself. You know, yes, somebody says, does the Lord call you to preach? Yes. Does every time I go to preach, He calls me to preach? No. He already called me to preach, so every time I go to preach, I'm committed to doing what He called me to do. Yeah. Are you listening to yeah. me? Yeah. Okay, you listen to me. If you're listening to me, wave your hand. You're not supposed to ever be sick again. Amen. Amen. You're not supposed to have disease in your body ever again. Amen. You're not supposed to walk in discouragement, disappointment, dejection, argument, fight, fuss ever again. Amen. You're not supposed to be depressed another moment. Amen. I'm telling you right now how not to be. This is not fictional Christianity. This is practical application. Amen. You should be real thirsty when joy's not there. You should be real thirsty. And if you're real thirsty, you'll drink. And as soon as you drink, you'll draw water. Amen. Amen. And then as you draw water and you're rejoicing, you'll draw even more water. Amen. And you drink more. And rivers of living water begin to flow out of you. And you'll be all excited about the relationship. And it impacts Father. He sees you like standing around other people. What do you do? Oh, you, you do? Oh, I do too. Oh, wow, I was doing that the other day. Oh, wow, cool. And your whole life is about what pleases them and how you can relate to them. And you're all caught up. Your whole manner, your whole behavior, your whole thirst is to be liked, to be accepted, to be loved by someone else. <laughs> em empty. Em empty. I mean, just come on, please. Em empty. Empty, insecure. No wonder, you know, you're sick and diseased and unhappy. No wonder things aren't working. There's not spiritual growth. You're still aloof. You're having problems. You're going from problem to problem. Father wants you to go from glory to glory. Father wants you to go from strength to strength. Father wants you to go, look, when you walk with God, you listen to me. When you walk with God, you go from blessing to blessing. There's nothing but increase. There's nothing but fruitfulness. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And then when, if, if there's a problem going on in my life, there's some kind of issue, sickness, disease, whatever, I just recognize what I recognize for what it is. Just as I read to you in, Neuter, in Numbers chapter 20 and verse 28. I recognize there's something going on. There's a place where I'm not allowing the life and the flow of God, the provision of this mantle that has been given to me yeah. to function and operate in my life. And I'm not going to have it. I'm not, just say, I'm not saying that the enemy doesn't try to place upon us things that he has no right. But listen to me. When Satan tries, you listen to me. Yeah. Yeah. When Satan tries to place upon us things he has no right to do, yeah. it's never effective. 
You hear me? Yes. Here, bring her to me. It's never effective. Naomi, you need to be spanked. If it's, but we're going to give you a break because it's your birthday. <laughs> Consider a birthday present, just granted. <laughs> Parents, your spiritual disposition is the greatest influence upon your children. Not the food you feed them, not the clothes you put on them, not the things you give them for their entertainment, your spiritual disposition. Huh? Sometimes people who are very, very needy they are very, very overt in their expressions. I want you to be, and, and sometimes people who are very, very needy are very introverted in their expressions. There's no breaking it out. The bottom line of it is God wants you to be full and not be needy except for Him. You'd be so full with Him. You're so, you have everything that you have need of. You've put on the Lord Jesus Christ. You've put on your glory. You've put on this divine provision. You've allowed this flow of heaven to take hold of you. That's all that matters. You're excited about the relationship. Father wants to so fill you that there's nothing more exciting to you than this privilege to be an ambassador of heaven, to be able to flow in the gifts of the Spirit, to talk to people about the wonderful things that God has done. The expression of the Holy Ghost, the expression of the Ghost is declaring the wonderful works of God, all the Father has done. This expression of it's the, it's the my, you and I were born for one single purpose, and that is, born of God that is, and that is to live out for his, live our lives for his praise and for his glory, to be proclaimers, evangels, who yeah. speak forth his word of life. Not because we have to, but because we're just so excited to. Yeah. Not out of some kind of sermonizing, but out of the flow of just joyful expression of the expressions of love, yeah. the expressions of excitement. Let this flow of God's life be in you. I promise you, it's going to result in spiritual maturity. It's going to re result in the blessings of God overtaking you. It's going to result in you walking in divine health, in you walking in all the divine blessings for which God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in this heavenly realm. It's going to result in you walking in, in, in divine prosperity. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, let me just give you some, a little bit of application. You know, when, we, when I begin to tell, the, you know, at the end of the meeting, I say, find people, hug them, tell them that you love them. I watch people just go to a purely human realm in casual interaction. I can do nothing for you. In fact, it's in many respects, it's actually a violation. I heard a man of God say, you know, when the scripture of God, when the word of God does not distill down into a change of your behavior and action, to where the Christ Jesus is being revealed, it's either extreme abuse and misuse of the Word of God or blasphemy. And you know, we want to understand this. We want to understand that we're sacred people, God's people, it's filled with the Holy Ghost, here to allow yield our members to Him so He can flow through us. And this church is a holy place, and there's an action that goes beyond something that is human. When I hug a woman, I never, there's never a lustful desire in me. And if there is, if somebody hugs up another person and there's a lustful desire, you are so far from anything that looks like the anointing of God. You've not put on the Lord Jesus Christ. You're not filled with the heaven. You're not filled with the things of the Spirit. That is just the opposite. Yep. Yep. Just crazy stuff. Yep. Yep. And it's because you've never learned how to move in the realms of the Spirit, which is, for me, a, 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 a novelty and a paradox, especially when it comes to the Pentecostal church, but yet I've discovered much, many, many, many people this way. Listen, it's not about that necessarily that you need to lay hands on people. It's not about that you need to give them a word. It's about that you need to give them an expression of divine love and, and have, let, that, let that love begin to flow out of you. Hugging people in about you now saying, what'd you have for supper? And what'd you eat? Where'd you go for rest? Where'd you go to a restaurant? We're going, oh, we're going over there tomorrow night. Did you know it was raining yesterday? What? <laughs> it isn't about you having some stupid conversation, that meaningless, idle words, you know, coming out of your mouth. It's nuts. I didn't come over you and, and, and hug you and, and, and just, you know, just because I'm participating in this wonderful thing called just letting people know around them that I love them, that, you know, that there's not any insecurity here. And if there is any, we're going to bust it right now. And I tell you, I don't come over and hug you and tell you about how wonderful Naomi is. What? 
Why? Will you get out of you get out of that realm? And come on under here into a place of understanding that this isn't about your living room, your refrigerator, your family, your extended family, your problems, your issues, about how bad it's been going for you. Because that is not a confession that has anything to do with the life of God. Are you listening to me? It's about you just simply just hugging somebody and saying, I love you. It's just, I'm just so blessed to be part of the family of God. Or whatever the Lord lays on your heart, just, maybe it's just, I love you. It's always good to see you. And, then, and, 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 and if you have a problem with that, you need to hug everybody in the place until you break whatever yoke's on you. Yeah. And if you hug somebody who's like, my goodness, man, I tell you right now, I'm really having a hard time. I'm all awkward. Could you lay hands on me and pray for me? Because I'm just tired of walking under this cloud of demonic oppression. Because you start getting transparent with God, you start getting real with God, holla. Huh? Because if you can't be free, if you can't be free in the realms of the Holy Ghost here in the, in the house, you, give me a break. You're going you're gonna to be just seeking the opinion and approval of men everywhere. People that seek the approval of men always have problems with everybody, and especially those of authority. You listen to me. It's true. It's a constant. We want to get past that. We want to get you all over into being slaves to everyone. Amen. Amen. Huh? Yeah. Walking in the love of God, Amen. living in His love, Amen. being so concerned for everybody else yeah. with divine compassion yeah. Yeah. that that's where this ministry flows. You see people, it's like a tractor being drawn you in. You're just, you know, just not willing to walk past them. And you see them busy, say, sir or ma'am, I know that you're busy. I just want you to know that Christ Jesus loves you so much. Yeah. And it's coming out as a flow of the Holy Ghost. Everybody can tell whether that was just something you just spiel. I just want you to know Jesus loves you. There ain't nothing. It's got to be a flow of the life of the power of God. And that flow in the life of the power of God is not going to be in you at all unless you develop a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ that goes beyond uh, mom, mom, dad, dad. Are you listening to me? Yes. Yes. It's about time God's people just go ahead and step into what Father has given to us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And as you do, I promise you, growth, maturity, Huh? Yes. I mean, I, I, I could have Sandy come up here. You were with me for how many days? Four days. Three days. Three days? Three or four days. Five days. You were five days. Preaching how many days? Preaching four, three days? Preaching three days. You can feel a spiritual difference, can't you? Absolutely. If you come into a meeting and you sit in here in a meeting for five days, you feel a spiritual difference. Especially if you, were in, if you were engaged. Maybe your first engagement is coming up and praying, participating with worship and praise. But then all of a sudden it just began to take you hold of you where you went left the house and it went out into the streets. And the first person you found, you just begin to say, listen, man, there's some wonderful things going on in God. You've got to come to the meeting. And if you can't come to the meeting, I just want you to know the power of God is here to reveal himself to you right now. And this begins to happen. You begin to talk as the person of faith and of authority yeah. instead of just beating around the bush about a bunch of nonsense, religious nothingness. Yeah. Yeah. And God's called everybody to do this. Yeah. Young, old, male, female, yeah. doesn't matter. Yeah. And the only reason that we don't is because the surge of God's life is not allowed to freely flow through us. And I want you to understand how to get past that. That's what this school of the spirit is about tonight. Yeah. I want you to understand that there is a flow of the anointing that you voluntarily give yourself to. And if you will, I'm telling you, everything changes. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father is able to prepare you to a place where you can go and get off an airplane and say, did you feel the earth shake? Because <laughs> you, 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 the God factor is there. The power and the glory of God, wherever where you go, God's there. Amen. Huh? Now you're moving in faith. Yeah, now your eyes open. Amen. Not about who you are and what you can do and your human genetics. Huh? Your human behavioral patterns. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Yeah. You got one God. His name is Almighty. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I saw this little cartoon. And somebody asked us. One kid was asking another kid, is any of your family members famous? And he said, well, I don't want to brag, but I heard my dad calling God his father. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. It's getting really, it's really good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on. <laughs> Talk about famous people in my family. <laughs> Just how about Jesus? 
<laughs> Come on, people. Come on. Know, know yourself. But we don't know one after the flesh anymore. Right. Right. The once we knew, you know, Jesus after the flesh. Now we're a new creation. We in God. Hallelujah. Uh, we belong to him. We, we, our citizenship is in heaven. Our conversation in heaven. Heirs, joint heirs qualified by God to go everywhere representing the power and the glory of heaven. And stop representing ourselves. People want to go around, represent themselves, do their own thing, walk in their own will and say that they're doing the will of the Father and that they're representing heaven. Nonsense. Get yourself over in the wonderful realms of the fire and the flow of heaven. Because I'm telling you, there's a big difference and it'll show up and everybody will know it. Huh? You won't have a preacher looking at you saying, when are you going to start walking in the anointing? Man, if you don't have enough anointing for the preacher to see that you're walking in the anointing, just give it up for repentance right there. <laughs> give it up for getting right instead of running, hiding in shame and fear because you all are wearing yourself on your sleeve and it's all about you. And so now you feel like you've been, you know, mistreated. Wrong, wrong spirit. Wrong spirit. Wrong, wrong. Hallelujah. Wrong spirit. Come on now, people. Come on. The laborers are few. Come on. The laborers are few. Come on, come on, the laborers are few. And Father's not going to send people in the harvest that don't act like his son, Jesus. He's not sending false laborers in. Hallelujah. Huh? Come on, man. God wants to prepare you unto every good work. Hallelujah. He's got himself a people. He's, he's purified, zealous of good works. What works? These works and greater works. That's good works. Those kinds of good works. Hallelujah. I'm not going to, I'm not going to let up every day. I'm going to talk about it. Every day, every day I'm going to preach about it. I'm going to go around and tell people about it. We're doing works and greater works. Hallelujah. Yeah. Blind, seeing, deaf, hearing. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise God. God. Come on. Yes. How many people did you run into today that were sick? And all you had to do was lay hands on them. Whew. All you had to do was lay hands on them. Well, come over here. I'm gonna, you, you got a cold? Get over here right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, you foul spirit of cold, leave this body right now. It doesn't matter whether they know Jesus or not. Sometimes it's easier to get people healed that don't know Jesus than to get the ones healed. Because they're already, oh, yes, I already prayed. Oh, Lord. <laughs> and they're putting up their defense barrier against the anointing. Well, if you already prayed and it was an effective prayer, you wouldn't be sick no more. Hello. <laughs> you know? That's why sometimes it's easier to get people um, healed that don't know the Lord. Because they're in a defense barrier. They didn't pray. <laughs> Come on, people. Let's get the flow. Yeah, amen. Oh, And then when you hugging people and just, just telling them that you love them, you know, you just do that faithfully, suddenly, suddenly something's going to happen. You, you, things are going to happen in the midst of that. And it can go everywhere from, from you saying, you know what, I, I just want to bless you with some money in certain situations. It could even be a word of knowledge. Hey, you know something? The Lord just laid on my heart that you had this need. And let's just pray about it right now. Because he gave, is it true? Because he just gave me, the, if it's true, then the Lord's right here in the midst of us for us to agree right now. Let's get it done. You know, this, or you, can, or you can just say, just, you know, say to a person, listen, I'm not feeling well. Pray for me. And just get healed right there on the spot. But I don't think that there's anything that's greater than a bond of love that is just that, that much more established. That a bond of consecration and trust and commitment to where you just end this thing. You just end this thing. Together. And there's just no, there's no way that you're going to do anything to reproach Christ Jesus in his church. But Father wants to take it up. Father wants to take it up from there. We want you to get, we want you to start taking to heart that there is a measurable display of the power of God that Father wants to cause you to step into while you're in the meetings that it so excites you. It's not something you've got to work up. It's not something you've got to try to have. You're just excited yeah. about going, you know, <laughs> and shouting yeah. to somebody yeah. about how great God is, how yeah. wonderful God is. And then you, be, you find this realm and you'll live in it and it, it's going to have an impact. Yeah. You know, it's a very difficult thing for me sitting on the airplane with everybody who just speaks Spanish. <laughs> I sit down with two clinicians, two, both of them doctors coming, from, coming back from Mexico City. They were both cardiologists. 
both at a, at a, a conference cardiological conference in Mexico City trying to talk to them about the Lord and they barely spoke any English and I bar barely spoke any <laughs> Spanish they finally understood oh pastor you pastor and oh you're going to Cuba Cuba you're coming to our country pastor Christian Jesus we got to have things we're going somewhere here <laughs> healer savior deliverer Touch you now. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Just lift your hands towards heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, I'm going to tell you something. A lot of times we're saying, Oh God, let your river flow through me. In reality, he's saying, Please, would you let my river flow through you? Yeah. And we need to start saying, rather, Lord, I'm going to let your river flow through me. Yeah. Father, yeah. we raise our hand and we quit blaming God. We quit blaming God and we take personal responsibility. Instead of saying, oh, God, let your river flow through me, which is an accusation of withhold. We get truthful with God and say, oh, God, I'm going to let your river flow through me. I'm autonomy, I'm the nonimum, your grace is not going to be bestowed upon me in vain. But what you've given to me, I'm not going to be running around asking you to do something else. I'm going to take a hold of that which you've given me. And I'm going to be faithful with it. And I'm going to take a hold of that which you have inspired me to have by your word and by your spirit. And I want you, oh God, to feel every one of my thoughts. I want you to feel every one of my emotions. I want you to feel every dimension of my disposition and character. And anything that doesn't look like you, we are going to be at war against it. And we're going to run the thing off. And we're definitely not going to yield our members to it because we done drawn a bloodline between ourselves and everything that's not of you and we not crossing over for nothing I'm not by the help and the grace of God I'm never going to get so empty that demonic lusts look good you got to be you got to be hungry to eat maggots you got to be hungry you got to you got to be hungry to go, go looking at the septic system for your next meal. Huh? You got to be desperate. Come on now, get filled up with the supply of heaven. Start drinking of the pleasures of his, of his presence. Hallelujah. Oh, supply. Oh, patanania. I'm telling you, God has clothed you with a greater mantle and a greater anointing than Aaron ever had. I'm telling you, a cloud of divine power and glory is there upon you that you can begin to participate with that will cause everything about your life to come under the divine order and mandates of heaven. Tis true, tis true, tis true. All we have to do is repent and cooperate with God Woo! and get on with the program. This is the ingredient of a great revival, a great outpouring of God. People that are willing to walk with God and do it His way. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Ooh. I pray that every one of you had just given yourself to exercising those things that we last talked to you about in the school of the Spirit, understanding how easy tongues and interpretation of tongues are weaved together and, and how easy it is to flow in that. <laughs> right there in your living room, just between in the, in the safety and security of divine interaction and relationship with God, you find yourself right there, and out of that speaking forth those things, <laughs> that the Spirit of the Lord was speaking through you, that was a mystery, but now it's known and revealed. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, it's time for the champions of God to stand up. It's time for the valiant men to stand up. It's time for people to show themselves to be on the side of God yes, Lord. rather than compromising yes. between two opinions. Yes, Hallelujah. 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 I'm telling you, God is doing it right now. We want you to be able to listen. We want you to be able to sit. 
in the quietness of your living room and smell rain, the rain of heaven. <laughs> we want you to go sit around a bunch of ministers and as soon as you sit down, somebody says, I smell rain. Huh. We want you to go wherever you go. And as soon as you begin to speak, the power of God begin to fall and Holy Ghost conviction. And no matter how hard you're having to plow, at the end of it, everybody rushes the altar. Oh, I prophesy to you. I prophesy to you. God has chosen you. God has called you. God has set you apart to come to know this greatness in him. I tell you, you give yourself to these things and you shall see the hand of Almighty God revealed through your life. You shall see those things which the Word of God has described taking place through you. I tell you, you've got to turn yourself completely unto God. Say nothing else matters to me. Let your whole heart desires and emotions be filled with the passions of the Lord. He'll do that as you sit in His presence. Yes, Lord. He'll do it. <laughs> He'll do it. <laughs> He's doing it right now. He'll do it. He'll so fill you up. <laughs> Somebody said, how can I deal with the temptations that are all about me? How can I deal with these things that so entices men? Be filled with the life of God. Yeah. Be filled with the life and death will have no place. Even as you're filled with the light of God and darkness has no room. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, if you could see the hideousness, if you could see the death, the darkness, the ugliness of the demon powers that are behind the temptation that has been disguised to be something that you desire, you would be so freaked out you'd die of a heart attack. Much less never want to ever be near it again. Oh, if you just come and begin to devote yourself to his life, all other things will become the hideousness of rotten, a rotten, corrupting corpse of death itself. Huh? Wisdom said, all they who hate me love death. All those who, in other words, do not choose me. Wisdom cries out and she puts forth her voice and if you read wisdom in the Proverbs, you're really reading about the Holy Ghost. You're reading the cry of the Holy Ghost, what the Holy Ghost has brought, the provision that is there. He was one who was uh, brought up with me for he was there with me. Uh, almost like the word, but he's more talking about the Holy Ghost. Uh, and daily, daily, wisdom was my delight. Hallelujah. <laughs> Father talking. Hallelujah. I'm going to walk like pops. Yeah. And daily, wisdom, and, wis and he that has wisdom depart from iniquity. Yeah. Ha, ha, ra. Only the fool goes after it. Yeah. Only those who have bent on self-destruction and have no understanding, avoid of it, yeah. Yeah. give themselves over to be picked apart by the buzzards right. of the demonic realm. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. God is looking for a people, and I'm telling you right now, these are the days and the times of God. Right now, the Holy Spirit has come. With a, with the, the Holy Spirit has come with a commitment. What's wrong with you? Don't fight your daddy. The Holy Spirit has come with a commitment. In the name of Jesus, Father, touch baby right now. The Holy Ghost has come with a commitment to teach us. Amen. Wow. To wrap your heart just around that one concept that he's here to teach us so that we can learn to be and do and function in all that he's made available for us in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. This is the school of the Spirit, yeah. to walk in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. I want nothing but what God the Holy Ghost wants. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Every one of you just stand with me right now and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. <laughs> you go ahead and begin to live for what God created you to do. He created fish to swim and birds to fly, but He created you and I to praise Him, to give thanks continually, 
to worship the living God, huh? to be caught away, captivated by the wonderful things that belong to his realm that last forever. Suturimande Apaya. Be filled, Masataya. Be filled, Masataya. Be filled, Rosaturinaya. Be filled, Sukorimea. Be filled, Sutaramosoya. Be filled, Moripaya. Be filled, Mosanea. Hallelujah. Be filled, Mosan Ramamani. Go to Sitanina. I tell you, every one of you, God will give you a special insight to be able to reach the people that are around you. Some of you that are right now in high school, you can walk around and find people and just say to them, listen, I'm going to have a Bible study so that people can understand what God has to say. Do you want to know what God has to say? Are you willing to take a little bit of time to hear what God has to say? I'm not pressing you for a decision. I'm just looking for some people who want to hear what God has to say. You wouldn't have to interview people too long. And first and foremost, you'd be seating them to start with, and it wouldn't be long, and you have two, three in the meeting. Hey, maybe you have to go to 200, 300. But I'm, my goodness, when you feel with the fire and the glory and the passion of God, yes, you're Lord. willing to wade through 2,000, 3,000 to find two or three. Yeah. Uh, it's true. There's not a person in this place that can't be used by God like this. There's not a person in this place. When the fire of God is on you, you go around, just let people know at your work. Listen, I, I'm having a Bible study. I'm telling, I've got a Bible study going on about just talking about who God is and the proofs of who He is and how we know He exists. And you can come. I would love for you to come. And you just go there and you show up every, every day at a particular time. Um, and you, 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 you begin to do that. And you begin to cry out to God with a burden for the lost. Yeah. Oh, Father has given yeah. us authority to turn men yeah. from darkness to light. Yeah. When we ha lay hold on of it and we won't let go of it, oh, He's given us the power to turn men from Satan unto God. And it may be, it may simply look like nothing more than you sitting at a picnic table at your workplace with your Bible open and there you're praying for souls because nobody took you up on your invitation, but you do not weary in well-doing. You know yeah. who you are in God. You yeah. know that God has given you. Listen, I don't, here's what some people, preachers were saying in Cuba. They were saying Cuba belongs at a church. I mean, my goodness, when you can stand up in the face of that much opposition and call it like God sees it, you're going to get yourself a breakthrough. Yeah. Yeah. And you got a situation like that too. And when you get yourself busy in the kingdom of God, you won't be wandering around anymore. God hasn't called you to be a wanderer, going from place to place. He's called you to be a stranger and a sojourner, yeah. going forth, preaching the things yeah. that belong to the kingdom of God yeah. with a glory of heaven on the inside of you like a river and the cloud of God surrounded you like the fire that came upon the tabernacle in the wilderness. Yeah. You don't need to be defeated. You don't need to seem like Amen. you're less or insignificant or unable. God has made you able. It's time to rise up in faith because that's how you're going to obtain a good report. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's how you're going to obtain a good report. Hallelujah. I'm say and I don't care what the I don't care what the resistance is. I don't care what's in front of you. God's made you more than able to be able to overcome it. He's made you more than able to yeah. and, and fit to be able to deal with it. Yeah. Come on, people. Yeah. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. I wanted to say this. You make sure you've got guards everywhere. Yeah. Listen, the, I, I've discovered that the Facebook is becoming more corrupt than ever. If, yeah. if you don't have special interest in ministry with a special anointing, not to look upon those things, you fenced, you've not yet been fenced with iron, you make sure that you don't have, you have your proper protections on your Facebooks, that nobody can send you a friend request unless they are already coming through another friend. And there's, those are easy things to set up. If you don't know how to set them up, then you don't even, you get off Facebook till you get somebody over there can set your settings properly. And I'm talking about putting guards on every place. Yeah. Huh? I'm talking about setting a defense everywhere. Yeah. So Satan can't take you and, and, and cause you to, to bow in, to, to his will until yeah. you're fortified and strengthened enough yeah. in the spirit of the Lord to stand up and take his head. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It's about time we get some valiant men yeah. and women. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Know who they, who side they are. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. And you protect your children because it's a lot easier to resist the enemy when he's never been allowed to work his iniquity in your life. When you've allowed and you yield your members to it, it becomes that much more of a fight. You've got to be that much more fit for the battle, but God's well able to fit you up. Okay? But you're going to have to understand how to walk in wisdom. 
being fit for that battle. Huh? Yeah. It's that many more times, in other words, that you've got to say no. You listen to me. Yeah. Yeah. When you haven't ever done it, haven't ever participated with evil, it takes, it's, it's, it's a few no's, and it's over. If you've participated, you've allowed yourself to get into it, it's, it's, it's maybe even a hundred no's, maybe even a thousand no's. And that's a battle. And you've got to get people around you know how to help you be fit for the battle. If you're not in, you know, there's ministry going on here continually. I'm praying right now about actually doing weekend revival, Saturday and Sunday, every weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> you know, we wouldn't be doing really school of spirit anymore, but we would just be doing Saturday and Sunday, just Saturday, Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, Saturday, Sunday. And then there's other things going on Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night. And just understand, I mean, there's other things that could be happening. Ministry to younger kids, yeah. ministry to other special groups. Maybe you're Hispanic and you want to minister to more Hispanics. I guarantee you there is enough Spanish-speaking solamente Espanol only around here that if you went knocking on doors and saying to Spanish, we're having a Spanish meeting, a Spanish service, yeah. and it's going to be at such and such a time, and we want you to come. And in fact, we'll come and pick you up. It wouldn't be long you will have a car full. And there's how many rooms in this place? 40, 47 rooms, 40-something 40 like that, rooms in this place. Yeah. Yeah. And, that, and the list goes on. Yeah. There's more to do if you stop letting Satan discourage you and yeah. disappoint you. Yeah. You get yourself under the yoke. You yeah. get yourself hooked up with this ministry. You come and you know how to, you know, the people who are, who are qualified to do ministry are those who are going to ask first. Yeah. 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 The people who are just going to go off and chart their own course, you're not even qualified. Because yeah. you're not hooked up. Yeah, you're not hooked true. up. Yeah. God, so we want to remedy that for you right now. I want to get, I want to get everything here tonight. Yeah. It would be in the way. You get hooked up. You get under yeah. the yoke. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. You get connected with the body of Christ. Yeah. I'm telling you right now, there's more work to do. There's more things to do. Father has purposed to do great things through this church and through Amen. your life. Amen. And so you just do it. Get in the school of spirit. Amen. Quit playing games. Amen. Amen. Quit allowing stuff in your life and in your attitudes that are completely demonic. Yeah, yeah, right. Call it that. Yeah. 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 Don't just say, well, it's always my granddaddy, my grandma's fault. It's Adam's fault. <laughs> Get yourself over to Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Start walking in Jesus. Amen. 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 We love all of you. Find a bunch of people around you. Hug them. Hallelujah. Tell them that you love them. <laughs> Find a place of ministry. Ah, Amen. whoo. Flowing in the anointing. Soap us. <laughs>